the next one. All in favor? Aye. August 30, 2017. So moved by the I do have a couple of changes. Second. Second? Yeah. Okay, now we go. I do have a couple of changes. On the first page, the, uh, the last paragraph, the contract was slightly higher. Do we need to put the number down? I would ask the number to be put in because I don't think it's slightly. So I, I mean, I don't know how you define slightly. So I think we should put the number in. Mm -hmm. Do we remember what that was? So I think it was 30 minus 5,000 or something. Do you have the exact number for the contract? No. Do you have it? I don't have it with me. No. All right, so we'll have to amend that with the correct okay. number. On the second page, the motion passed with one may vote. Do we need to add the name? I think Robert's rules say you're supposed to have the name. Name. Yeah, the name. name. Oh, yeah. Yeah, said it should be added because. Yeah. So that was Chris? Yeah. 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 Did you get Chris that? Chris Rucho was the day vote. Then we're going to get the figure. Can you even get the figure? I have it, but it's at home. Okay. Those two are. On that, you okay? Yeah. So that will appear on tonight's minutes. No. Um, well, she'll just amend these minutes. Right. So yeah. more she'll amend these minutes. More than herself yeah. with amended minutes. Yep. All right. Yep. All, right. All in favor? All right. Abstain. All right. Police station. Uh, start with the OPM report, Tony. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, report has a nice picture of the police station and the plaque on the front of it. Uh, we've basically moved into the finishes uh, very heavily at this point, as you can imagine. Uh, we've only had one RFI since our last monthly report. I think we had 50, now we have 60. Uh, the three of them that were open as the report was being created, I think we're down to only one that's open now. Uh, none of them? Okay. Thank you. Uh, 29 PCOs. I think we're up to 30 right now that are pending um, with a couple of late additions in the PCO log. And uh, those both are for about $1,300 total, $1,306. One was for an additional conduit that was requested uh, by Worcester Radio to, to facilitate the running of their wire. And the other $600 one was the pending uh, heat trace uh, that the electrical contractor is claiming he doesn't, does not own. The work is done, and we'll need to deal with that during the closeout process of his contract. Uh, there were, both of those change orders are pending, and none are being presented at this time for your meeting. Construction, uh, last month we had an item on here regarding the exterior siding. The contractor came back to the site. He stripped one side of the building, leveled everything out. Uh, John and myself walked around the building with them, and they were correcting issues that day as we walked around. So at this time, any of their very visible issues have been corrected. Everything's being addressed landscape that we've all uh, kind of talked about and you've probably seen emails on is being maintained by the contractor until it's accepted. Uh, a lot of our MEP systems, the fire protection sprinkler system are coming online this week. Uh, generator startup is scheduled for next week. HVAC boilers, everything's being fired up in the building. HVAC is on because the air conditioners are on when you drove by. When you drove by? Nice. Um, we had a preliminary inspection from Mass DPH. They picked up on a couple of screw heads that they felt weren't tight enough that they could possibly get a shoestring around it. What did they say about the design? And uh, they said it was a great design. Great, right? it was great. <laughs> it was very well designed in the separation of sight and sound between uh, the cell areas. So uh, kudos to the architect for that and uh, the loose screws have been fixed. Uh, 
They, we had a screw loose. There's a lot of those. It wasn't mine. It was, <laughs> yeah. Not the architects. Um, on the owner's side, phone, fiber, water, gas utilities have all been activated to the building. Gas will be turned on uh, very shortly at the building, but it's all run down there. The accounts are set up. The propane tanks have been inspected. They've been filled accordingly. So everything is moving along. Um, schedule is probably off a couple of weeks. Can I just ask a question? Sure. The, the propane tanks, way back when you had said that the propane's gonna sit in there, the, the backup generators are gonna come on once a week for 10 minutes or something like that, and the propane's gonna go stale eventually, unless we lose power. Yep. Is there a way to say, okay, you know, schedule it so that, okay, the propane's nearing the end of its life, we're gonna run on the propane for the next month, and uh, that, that way you use the power, or and then and you use the propane then when it's empty you fill it again because it's going to have to be purged and filled anyway is, is there i don't know that anybody's ever done that i'm sure you could you could say hey in the middle of the night you know some off hours just let it run for the week i mean does the backup generators only supply the you know the backup lighting or is it 100 no it's it's business. full building full load so we we could i mean it it wouldn't affect the equipment. And my question is, would it affect the equipment in any way, shape, or form? If we no. Did that? No, but it, but it does add wear on the generator, and right. more wear will require more maintenance on the generator. So, agreed, you know, use it or lose it, but also the wear and the hours on the generator will increase, basically. The generators to make Would it create a noise nuisance? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, it's, it's something I was thinking about, and, yeah. and this triggered the question. And yeah, you, you, you want them filled when you need them filled, but you don't want to bite that bullet right. and I mean, you, that expenditure. What would end up happening is, we, you know, we would have, we'd have to run it down to 5% and, and hope that in the right. three days we're waiting to get it all, all filled again. But the noise and, and the wear and tear on the generators is probably not going to make it something that's really cost efficient to do it that way. Yeah, I, I haven't heard of anybody that does that just to run the fuel down. I think they're running it, what is it, once a week for 10 minutes? That's, no, that's 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah, that's good because then you just, because it's like so people that have them in the house. The only time right. they use it is five times a year and right. it doesn't stop. So. But if you want to run it for an hour, just to. Yeah, I, uh, I think that's good. I think, I think that question was brought up too. I don't know if it was at this meeting with people or one of our roadshow. What about the noise? Right. And it was said right. the only time the generator would go on right. is when there's a ma you know a major motor test. Yeah. But you wanted a big uh, gas barbecue. Barbecue. Yeah. That's gonna have a quiet bit. <laughs> It'll be yeah. out of propane in a week. <laughs> that generator is on. It's like noisy within the building and to the neighbors. Or oh, so neighbors. No, no, it has an attenuation package, a sound attenuation package, but it's still a generator with an exhaust pipe. And it's, you can't stop the noise from the exhaust pipe. It's not like a construction site, but it. If I was your neighbor and you were burning that for, for three days straight, I'd be upset. It's like you're running two diesel engines. Okay. That's what it is. What's so how, uh, how, when will the, how long does the propane last? Did we, I'm sure we went over that, but. Well, if you're running continuously, it would last 72 hours. No, I'm saying just no use, we never use it. When does it have to be changed? Oh, hmm. uh, take 20 minutes times. No. Right then into seven, seven, no. When, does when it will it be stale? stale? Oh, when does it go stale? I do not have I don't. an answer. Yeah, I mean, is it five years, ten who, years? Who said that? It goes stale. I don't know. But That's what I'm. Way wondering. in the beginning, oh. we some I don't know who it was said that the propane eventually will go stale. You'll have to pump it out and put new propane in. Uh, I I don't know. Yeah, we will. Yeah, if we yes, can, well, I think, we're, I think part, of the maintenance, yeah. part of the maintenance, we're going to have to have that answer. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in seven years from now, when you retire. I can tell you another police stations, <laughs> it hasn't happened in any police stations and fire stations we've done in the last 10 or 15 years. Life of Did they change out the propane? I've been aware of that. I, uh, I maybe misremember. How I'm much? Just one, somebody 10 to 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> if there would be unreasonable expectation for the show. All right, then, <laughs> then I, then, 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 then I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and moving right along. Uh, as you can see in our snapshot budget, uh, I've updated that to include the commitments. We had a couple of change amendments to Lantel technology 
uh, as we keep refining and refining the technology being put into the building. Um, and ultimately, we have sitting here today, if we spent everything that we know of, uh, we have $43,198 as a positive variance moving forward. <clears throat> Flipping through the book, I've given you the RFI log, given you color schedule showing updates to percent complete. As I started to say, we are running, I guess, probably two weeks behind. The contractor was hoping for mid to late September for completion. And if you look at the uh, completion schedule, which the contractor has put together, which is after the bar chart schedule, he's really looking for the first week of October to begin punch list and owner training sessions, which is taking people through the startup and the maintenance of all the different building systems. So somewhere along the way, we have to think of who else other than Jay is probably going to know how to run and operate the entire building. Well, we're going to need, need a Who help. else would be included in those training sessions? It's going to happen a little bit later on the training because uh, you need to approve the OEMs before we have yep. any training sessions. So it's probably going to be at least mid, mid October, at least, before that happens. Could I, I mean, I just, are we any closer to, I know we talked with the school in regards to possibly. We'll be putting forward a budget proposal for FY19 to hire a facilities manager. Okay. So it won't happen until. So at that point, maybe someone can run over how to run the building too. I mean, uh, that person may know some answers, but we should have everything in writing anyway, right? We'll yeah, have everything plus in the writing. training is right. done as videotaped by a professional videographer, so. And someone be, new comes in. They'll be able to review that. Right. That's perfect. And all else fails, call Jay. <laughs> <laughs> 724 <laughs> maintenance, man. Um, turning to the budget, the master budget report, which is what's generated the summary. A couple of quick things to go over here. Um, highlighted items under the invoiced columns are the highlights, uh, highlight the items that are in your packet for invoice review later. Under the anticipated commitment column is $10,000. That's a plug number that I've been carrying throughout construction just in case any last minute items or anything occurs, so there's a $10,000 hold plug item for unknown uh, if anything should need to change in the next 30 days. Um, down under furniture, we have $12,000 highlighted as the balance moving forward for additional shelving for the evidence storage room, record storage, some of those other items that might need additional storage shelving should be more than enough to cover it. Um, the land tell added scope, those are the pending uh, additions for network computers, Wi Fi, various things that have been added to the project, along with the $1,369 just below that for an upgrade. Uh, that was for phone systems. We had to add five, five wall phones. Uh, around the building that aren't sitting on desks, the fitness room and a few other places, the phone line for the elevator and a couple other things. So that's what that number is for. Further down the bottom of the page where you see discuss with a couple of blue highlighted numbers, there's a few things in here that I usually see track of but I haven't seen and we haven't had discussions on. One is um, 18, they're not utility. Blue, they're not blue on our form, so it's they're not blue. They're not blue? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It didn't, didn't photocopy. Oh, I did. So it's 18. Copy yellow. Yeah. Uh, yes. So utilities, electric, gas. I know the utilities have done work. I haven't seen anywhere any invoices or cost, whether they're department transfers that have come out of the police budget. I have not seen any invoices. So DPW, West Boylston, Muni Light, nobody's. Well, we should, we should, if it, if it did come out of the police budget, wouldn't we take it out of this and give it back to the police? Is it a contract for carrying these yeah. Yeah. No. The yeah, so we. Doesn't that come out of the No, I'm saying for West Boylston, Muni Light, for DPW, John Fitch for fiber. 
if any of that, we had money set here that I haven't allocated anywhere. It's not included in your, quote, balance available. I'm still holding it. I'll check with the chief. I just haven't seen anybody saying, hey, there's a bill coming for the fiber cable. Let's or a question that. She would have said something if that bill came across and asked, where do I build it? Where do I put this? I know for a fact that we have not received any invoice from the municipal light board. Um, and that was roughly, what, $43,000? Um, and that was that the eighteenth not covered. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> that was forty three thousand, and we only was get it, eight. I don't know. Or was it a total of forty three thousand? Forty three thousand. Is that the one time? That was the extra. I'm sorry. The um, fiber optic. Fiber. I thought fiber. it was a lot less than that. Oh, that, 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 that came out of the grant. That came out of the grant. Right. There was five thousand that we earmarked with Gary, yeah. not forty three. Yeah. I know the fiber came in a lot less than. Okay. That came through the light department. I think that was a prayer time. Right. They, they drastically reduced. I mean, they yeah. basically right. um, donated right. quite a bit. All right. So yeah. just know that that money's there and there's no invoices because if you look, the invoice column says nothing. We still have $10,000 for relocation. And I know most of the furniture is not coming, so that will be new, but we still need to get evidence records and all that so we need to start talking about whether we're going to hire a moving company or how we're going to do that and then the last item is that municipal bond cost we've got 37,000 I don't know how those I've seen some emails from accounting on bans and borrowing costs but I haven't plugged any of that in here as a quote invoice against the project the um, treasurer collector is out for a couple weeks. I'll check to see if her staff knows anything about the status of that, but I haven't seen anything. Yeah. Days. And so if you just say, hey, they, they paid X amount, I'll plug it in as an invoice, even though I probably won't see a, a solid, a, a real invoice to it. Mm -hmm. So there's probably some more wiggle room there. I don't know if we'll get to the 48,000, but we got 43 plus some wiggle room. Tony, have you been checking with Leslie to compare your budget numbers against hers? I have not okay. lately. I did it probably six months ago. Might be a good thing to do over the next week or so. Okay. And she's in or she's out for a couple weeks? Um, the accountant is in. Yeah. Yeah. Jay, that's for the rolling. Will they put the rolling? No. They'll be in rolling dollars. What was that question? The rolling um, the slide shows. Identity storage shelving. Okay. Okay. There was an issue with it. So the drawer was designed for stationary at the time, and so changing it to rolling increased the live load beyond what would, uh, well, it would survive and would deflect like that. And that's what so I have. So we planned in, we planned in just regular shelving. Yeah. That would have been, that would have been. We could have done it the other way. way. But we didn't know that, right? We, had, we tried to get them all in, but we changed it. We changed it. But we, we budgeted for just shelter. No, we budgeted for the wrong. We budgeted for high density. Oh, okay. So then, so we won't be using my phone. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have on uh, the police station. None? Back there? Sure. Uh, on the police? Yes. You read me? Uh, no, other than we're preparing uh, to, uh, we're committed in the project, we're looking at punch lists, so um, you know, project participants are, are walking through the building, we're noticing things, we're, contract is not 100% done, we're not committing to 100% done, because we like to, as one says, get an advance of him. Uh, so we're looking around, uh, next week I'll be walking on top of the roof, <laughs> checking the roof out, but, um, no particular issues. It's going very well. Great. Timing wise, contractor keeps reminding us he's three months ahead of schedule. Okay. John, we, <coughs> pardon me. we had talked about a uh, pre move tool. We'll have to do that next. Oh, was it okay? I'm sorry. I thought that was a different idea. Yeah, the, uh, the tour for the committee, me? Yes. Oh, yeah, that. Okay. So I guess we could do it anytime. Whenever you want. Yeah, we can do that anytime. We're going to talk about it, one for the public. Okay. Yeah, we can do that anytime you guys want to do it. 
So are you saying you can just not go just go there whenever, no. but if no. you guys no. want to pick a time and yeah. yeah, I'll make sure there's not cords running across the place and you know, three thirty, four o'clock, four thirty, five o'clock. What time is good for everybody? Anybody get any particular day? You want to do it prior to your next this meeting? Yeah, I said I did. Well, we could do uh, even even a half an hour before uh, this meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. By the time we travel, we'll walk through. Yeah, so why don't we do six o'clock on the next this meeting? Okay. Which is uh, a Saturday in a while. Okay. All right, preparation of grand opening. Um, we talked with the chief, and he thought it would be wise after the furniture's in to have the public come in before there's any personal papers and stuff in there, so you, they can go to all the rooms and see everything. So um, we think in the second week in October, that was it. Yes. That's Saturday. Yes. <coughs> so that would be not a grand opening. That would be just a open house. Open house. Yeah, yeah open house. That's what I meant. There will be a difference. Well, I don't know. The chief seemed to think that then we would have a ribbon cutting ceremony we, down the road. I don't know if that's well, the usually, 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 usually that's the ribbon cutting. That's, that's, that's what I would Even if do. you're not moved in, yeah. you're cutting the ribbon. What, it's a public that. celebration. I All right, we'll do it on the second what, week. Uh, 14th? Saturday the 14th? Saturday the 14th. It, as long as we're still okay with the schedule. Well, we got to well, confirm. Then we, won't, we won't set it until we... When will we know? Because we're going to have to give the public a... It's pretty well, it's pretty good. At that point, we, we just need Joe Carrigan to confirm delivery of all his furniture. His furniture is... He's, we took a look today. Um, so he's on schedule for his furniture for the first week in October. So you think it'll be the second week we good? So, Noon? Let's set it for uh, Noon. October 14th, 11. Is that good? You tell me. Okay for everybody? Yeah. 11 o'clock? Did you say 12 or 11? 11. 11. 11. So we'll talk about that again and what we're going to do. Yeah. Facebook or something on social media, event for it, an event for it or something like that. Geez, I love that. That's not my preview, but go ahead, somebody else. Uh, as we confirm. Yeah. Yeah. You got the finger sandwiches? Yeah. 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 You got the coffee? I'll bring the brownies. Brownies. <laughs> The plain ones, right? <laughs> <laughs> Once you call a ride up. <laughs> Attendees, guest speakers, congressmen, selectmen. Select. Think of the whole itinerary. Okay, Charlie Baker, that ought to be. <laughs> I only want to invite people that had anything to do with the project. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 that would never happen. Yeah, that never happen. Good, good luck with that. All right, uh, Very nice. prep for moving. Um, can, can, I, you can I ask you before then? Are we going to put again the, the police station sign in the road, side of the road? The, the post yeah. are yeah. post The post are yeah. The post are there. Yeah. The there. It's, it's not near the road, it's inboard near the park. Yeah, yeah. The like road. a town. Yep, yep. Yeah. 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 Someone okay. was asking, oh, the, the red lights. lights. The yeah. wall. <laughs> waiting for the lights. No, the post, <laughs> the post room just waiting for the signs. The sign will be there before the lights. Right. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, the moving. Yeah, I think we just need to talk this week and next about what all is moving. And I'll walk through with you and we'll try to figure out how many boxes, crates, files. Things from, from the old station. The old, yeah. the chief is actually We're going to hire somebody. Yeah, he's working on that now. Okay. 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 Right. Jay, you stuff in the box, seal it, and then they move it. Depends on the, what the moves. So some movers want to move themselves, but some things are not yeah. allowed to let them. Right. right. Secure. Right. Which are the things I believe that we do ourselves. But anything else that they want. Jay, for my own curiosity, what do you do with evidence? Is that moved by a bonded mover? That's something that we as the police officers would do with the evidence people. So you'd put it in a cruiser? Bring it over, or whatever be appropriate. We'll right. get into that because of this. Okay. Sure. Right, right. You might get to the point where you put it in sealed boxes and the move it. Just move it with a police officer. I would imagine. In case there's, there's a there's a process. Yeah, there's a right. process that's already right. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, is there anything else for the police station? Okay. Move on to senior center. Tony. Oh, I do. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Is there money in this budget for trees and fence between the units, between the uh, properties? It was said a long time ago that the town would be adding them. So it's it, cert certainly available some money from there. Right. It wasn't a, a budget item that. No, but there's money to purchase. I know the town we're planning on town doing it. You have $41,000, $43,198 to spend however you want and at the will of the committee. And the CW has trees that you can put in there right now. Right. Okay, so then we're to the only class might be financing yeah. some installation. Chris and I are going to meet with the neighbors in the, in the next coming week and we'll, we'll talk to them. Yeah, there's a new neighbor. The house right behind is a new person. I, I reached out to them. I talked to them. They want to get the down and speak with us. So maybe next week when John's back, we can meet with them. I'll, I'll email you and mention Okay. Great. Can you make sure that Butch gets invited yep. to that meeting yep. so it's all, yep. he knows exactly yep. what needs to be done? Yep. All right. Okay. All set with please, Rachel. All right. Senior Senate. All right. Uh, senior Senate, you have another executive summary report for September for West Boylston Senior Center. Uh, CMB is on board. They've developed and revised and received approval for the building program from the committee. Uh, outlining spaces and square footage. They've taken the, that information and developed a floor plan. Um, multiple meetings and input from COA, FISP, and the FISP subcommittee. Uh, that plan has gone through a number of iterations, which John's going to show you shortly. Uh, he's developed exterior elevations this week and further developed those since Monday's meeting, hopefully. Uh, along with, as he indicated at our last meeting, you know, changes that come to the elevation, changes that occur to the floor plan, and how those uh, two relate to each other in their development. Uh, the building floor plan is currently sitting at 10,173 square feet, which is less than the previous architectural <coughs> study. The covered porch is 1,257 square feet, and the addition of a portico on the front of the building covers about 791 square feet. The designer has received the existing condition site survey yesterday. Okay, which was issued by our consultant places, your consultant places. I do have extras that I printed here if anybody wants site plan of the existing conditions, the lots, the plans, the meets, the bounds, the survey, potential wetland that he I don't think has gone out yet and that I always look at but it's noted on there. There's no construction activity at this time. Sure. It says here, it says that we met with the FISC subcommittee member. Does that mean one member of the committee? Yeah. Okay, folks. Members. Okay, when? Oh, except probably one. When was that? I mean, I'm just curious when that meeting was, because I don't think I got the notice of another There was one two weeks ago, and there was one this week. So the one, so after, this is after all of the council on aging? There was one two weeks ago, this was prior to the Council, Council of Aging. Last Monday. Last Monday. Then we met the first Council of Aging. No, that's, yeah. First, then we met the one we this Monday, and we did not meet with the Council on Aging this week. But we did get, John got input from Lisa, who got input from Council on Aging, and other folks walking through the building, or looking at the plan, I should say. I do have a proposal tonight as part of your package for the geotech for $8,700 and we have a package with potential boring locations which will be staked out tomorrow and DigSafe will be notified based on your approval and we will schedule the borings for a week after that. And then to also say, uh, you think we should have the DBW go up there with the back hole and dip with the foundation? Yes. It used to be, where the basement used to be. For the old basement. See, make sure they took it out. Because I need to remember I asked you about that, if there was any uh, contract that they. There was no record of anything. I didn't think there was, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, can we arrange with uh, Butch? 
send so them back, back, so back up back there. Back over to do some chest areas. And Mike Kittred would know exactly where they, because he went to school there. He, he knows exactly where the old basement was. Because the only part of the basement. Right, right there. I mean, they should know. Yeah. I think we're going to find something after this. That's what I'm afraid. <laughs> so, um, will he know roughly how far down to go? I'll call him. Okay. I'll give him a call. Okay. Um, so other than that, outline the schedule that we're working towards uh, for the contract documents and the bidding. Your 1.1 million is outlined with the commitments to the date. And invoices to date. I've given you meeting minutes of the programming and design phase meetings that we've been having with the outline of the items to move forward that we're reviewing. Give you a copy of the same kind of master budget format, a couple of invoices, and a bar chart schedule. So we'll do the invoice for Geotech uh, when we do the rest of the invoice. Yep. Okay. All set? All set. Any questions for Tony? John? Big flat uh, 
into the, into the building gable that didn't have very good human scale. So we basically pulled the walls in here and pulled it out here so we got a, uh, a neutral effect on the square footage. But we were able to get a little bit of a gable within a gable, and that brought the scale down uh, quite a bit. So you're no longer looking at a, at a billboard size uh, uh, a wall there. John, just so I ran through, that's 10,000 uh, gross square feet. Gross, yeah. outside the wall structure. So just the, the, the game room there, it looks like the, you're going to enter right in. Isn't that going to be congested where all the tables are? You're going to enter right towards tables? Well, you want to enter, the tables are here. The tables can be shifted, but you, you've got probably about four or five, four feet there in front of that. Tables can be actually turned four or five degrees if you want to. We also have smaller uh, little tables here, so there is people playing cards and the place for these people to sit and wait and watch while they're playing billboards too. So there's a little bit of like yeah. table seating. One on the of the things that uh, that I had mentioned, um, uh, we, this yes, it's a senior center. We want it to be a community friendly place. That multi purpose room, would it be, the, the big one? Yes. Would it ruin the acoustics or, or the feel of the room if we were to install basketball, retractable basketball things that, you know, they go up at night when you're not using, or during the day when you're not using them? Because right now we have a shortage of basketball, interior basketball space for the girls and boys basketball. It's always an issue. Well, it w from the point of view, there's absolutely a dining space. So whatever you're putting on the floor can get wet, stay, you know, it's going to have food on it. It's, so that's not necessarily ideal. So we were holding to about a 12 foot uh, ceiling height here, about, a, about 14 feet above the ceiling to run the HVAC system. We'd have to raise that up another five feet or so to get you a uh, to get you that uh, basketball, which would you know obviously increase the scale of this, make it much larger than the rest of the building. Uh, anything is feasible, but I'm, I, I don't know that it's uh, would wouldn't be easily done. Okay. It would basically be a a significant uh, change to a senior center. Okay. And from the point of view of community use of the multi-purpose room. I checked with the uh, community theater, uh, and that room is eminently usable uh, in terms of ceiling height uh, and the size of the room and the potential audience. In addition, it can be used for uh, lectures, uh, musical performances, uh, and a variety of other things. Public uh, hearings. Yeah. <clears throat> we can use it for town election, I guess. Yes. Well, you gotta, it's going to be voted by the state. Yeah, we can okay, just equip yeah. yeah. One thing, I mean, one of the earlier requirements I think this came from the previous study was to sit 200 people in the room. Okay. So we can sit 200 people in the room, chairs only, not chairs and tables, uh, with a dais so you can have good sized meetings. The one caveat to that is we're only planning about 50 car spaces. So if we thought, if we thought that the 200 people here was going to be a driver, no pun intended, um, we would need a lot more in the way of parking. We wouldn't want to create parking that yeah, would seldom used. I agree, but if, if they can park it around the school, yeah, you could another definitely there. park it there, right? We don't they have that many parkings on the school. There, I guess. Park right. over at the police station. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For a walking path to the police station. Any questions on the plans? Oh, we did talk. And, and, I want to reinforce that in the after hours, in, in the community uh, use of the project after hours, uh, right now we have access to all, every room can be open because they are all locked off the main corridor. We don't have like a, uh, a door here keeping people out of anything space. So right now they're all available if you wanted to have an arts and crafts space or a, another classroom space, yoga or whatever. Uh, we do have it there. Uh, Builders would be open if you, if that was your mind. Well, in the elevations, again, we were trying to create a very welcoming uh, project. We were looking at uh, the approach to the building it would be coming up the driveway, it would be right here. So this is the corner that you can see. And the nice thing about it, really, is right it's approaching it below, and there's a wraparound porch. So I think that's going to be an element that's going to be very welcoming. So the front elevation is right here. 
this is what I meant by a tall wall, which we broke down to a, a smaller space. Uh, this is the portico, which may or may not bear upon the no budget be there. I took the top off the portico in order to leave some space for some uh, PV panels, so photovoltaic uh, panels. If that, this is a due facing south roof, uh, almost ideal with elevation just under 30% or 30 degrees. So there could be some uh, photo cells on there, photovoltaic. Uh, um, you can see this is the porch. This is just showing a little bit of shade and shadow in that area. Uh, here's the main entrance. The, uh, there's a lot of glass here. I'm thinking about a lot of individual lights where you can actually put on the inside some uh, decorations, some elements on there on the shelves. So it kind of displays. Uh, you have a nice display that's inside out. Um, receptions window, director's windows, and this is the uh, multi-purpose classroom space. Uh, this is the arts and crafts that pops out right here. Uh, looking from the west, uh, you can see the portico reaching out of the car. Um, again, the, this is the porch, and back here would be billards. At the top of the roof, we basically uh, stopped the uh, The hip roof, the mansard roof, and we gave ourselves a little vertical element here. So when you're looking at it, you can see just a roof line disappeared. A little bit, of, a little element up here. So you have a lot of roofing, and you, and you want to have something up, up top to kind of capture that view. Uh, in the looking at it from the rear, which is not very well seen, um, there's a drive here. This is where employees would park six or seven vehicles right here come in, there's a little covered access here behind the kitchen. Um, this would be the recess, the indent, that is the lounge with the windows that would look out. Uh, we, were, we have a uh, cupola on top. It could be a, uh, we discussed this on Monday. Originally it was thought to be a uh, light bulb to bring light down into the building. Uh, right now it's positioned so that if there was a skylight or a light bulb would come down right here right in the center all this um, open activity area. John, is there that back, that back entrance, is there a way that a car can back up to it to load and? Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, remember, back here, we're going to have a dumpster because it's behind the kitchen. Right. So, and we're going to have a transformer. So it's going to be a little service area back here. So they can back in and they, they're comfortable with the, the doors the way they are to bring food in and out and things yeah. like that. Yeah, oh, it's right there. Right. It's, it's ideal. And then like the, the covered in the front. How many, is that one cap? One that would be one way. It's one way. It'll be and one actually, way. right now it's basically two cars. That way, but the other way it's one cap. And then the person can step out wide. Oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah. one wide. You want to want to have two cars? Yeah. Correct. So yeah. they, they, it's going to be designed to go one way. Yes, absolutely. And is it possible that that might not be in, when you put numbers together that that might not be an alternate that there could be we could get that into the price. I don't know yet. We okay. don't have a site plan to come up with a site cost yet. Uh, we have this, and we have some dollars per square foot, but we don't have the whole package. The whole I, package I think. Package. I mean, I think it's so important. I mean, to, we have to. I think we have to look at making sure it happens because it's not something we're going to add down the road when we find out it's a problem. Yeah, and, and still, I mean, the, an estimate is just still a guess. So right. until until the contractor signs something on that line, we don't know it'll be high enough. So. So a lot of people build it out and then build it later. That's that's what I'm saying. And you're gonna take the, the bid number right. to town meeting, so right. you may as well ask for it all right. at that point, right? right. Yeah, it would look nice with cabinet construction right on it too. It's the main donation. Big <laughs> donation. <laughs> um, and the on the back side facing east, which is the uh, this is the storage room and this is the brick room, it's not really uh, highly visible, so I didn't spend a lot in the way of cost elements here. It's a, it's a straight wall, as I said, it's like a 12, 13 foot eave across here, a couple of doors, some upper lights. And, uh, we're figuring as far as uh, aesthetics or uh, exterior finishes, a couple of different types of uh, siding, a, a clapboard or a, a, a shake or, or typical colonial elements like that. Could be vinyl, could be cement board. Uh, PVC trim board or cement board trim. 
uh, standard we're looking at, uh, or I imagine asphalt shingles, it was mentioned in the previous study that they were thinking about a metal roof in the previous study. I don't know where you fall on the appearance of those things. I myself think the shingle is a dollar-wise a better cost life cycle investment for you, and the metal, uh, metal by itself is more expensive, and the snow guards are very expensive to keep that snow on the roof. But if you, if you like that look, then, you know, the people start to install it. A couple of questions about lighting. Um, for, I guess, when, well, first is natural lighting. I was going to ask, um, especially in the south elevation, um, yes. in the top right, in near that triangle space, if there's any way that there could be more windows, just because it looks like it's okay. going to be so open. Yeah. Uh, the, the ceiling is pretty, that's about 12 feet of ceiling okay. right there. So that's at the ceiling height. Okay. Uh, I, I agree, you could pop it up. I, when this was not here, I did move glass up there and I was trying to come up with a scissor stress. The problem with the scissor stress coming down this right here is if you had a scissor stress on the whole peak going down here, you would hit a flat soffit because this, this door is going to move across the flat soffit and that's going to cut this face in half. Okay. And, one, and, and it would have created an enormously high and small space. Okay. And for dining, you really, you know, it's impressive to sure. sit in a very tall space. Yeah, I just didn't know if there's any more ways to optimize natural lighting. Um, well, skylights are, are one, okay. you know, we can sort of look at that. Uh, direct south facing skylights are, are, are so good unless you can uh -huh. take care of the glare. Right. Um, and then the, the drop-off area sort of towards the parking lot, too. Mm -hmm. um, I anticipate there's going to be like a sidewalk or something. Like moving towards the building, you couldn't really see very well. Uh, um, right now, yeah. this, this would be a sidewalk across here. This okay. Parking. We, we assume parking coming across here. Sure. And there would be a crosswalk. Okay. Coming right in here too, so that so people can gather and come in this way. Okay, and especially towards that sidewalk, to be budget in um, laying appropriately. Oh sure. Yeah, okay. You would want to get you know one little one one or two foot candles out in the middle. Yeah, I didn't know if that was already in our plans or not. Or it, would, it would need to be. Okay. It would definitely need to be. Okay. Now, there was, I don't know, Pat, if you were, there was some talk maybe of a bathroom facility for the fields, but that, this isn't, this isn't, there's no talk about that. That didn't get to me. Okay. So. Uh, we did have, we did look at Monday, and I spent quite a few hours. Um, we had tried to put a uh, little pop out here, a little gazebo or an octagon shape here. That would be a nice precursor to look at the building. It got to be a little bit of gymnastics as far as the framing, and it ended up with a, with a bunch of issues. One, we do have a fair amount of seating in the, in the porch already. We didn't necessarily need more seating. In this, in this shape here, the seating, the seating would have been looking in the wrong directions all the time. And then we looked at, if you look at back benches, a uh, uh, railing around this area would have been unusual because there was no railing here, no railing here. It didn't look, it didn't come off as nice as I'd, as I'd hoped, so I went back to the basic frame. Farmer's porch is good. I would hope that we can, that cupola skyline is going to cast a, 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 just a wonderful warm glow into that. Uh, lobby area, and I hope that we can keep it. You talked a little bit the other day, John, about maybe that would go or something. Um, well, uh, Lisa was the one who was uh, expressing her concern that uh, a skylight or a, a cupola or a white well would be a maintenance issue. I mean, I, I was in the Beeman today, and uh, in the reading room of the Beeman, and it, the, the light streaming in there is just magnificent. Um, and um, if we can get a little bit of that into the lobby of this building, it would be so welcoming. Yeah, I, I agree. It would be nice to have. Yeah, Skylights, they come so much in the last couple of years. I mean, they don't, they don't leak anymore. I mean, mine never leak. Yeah, mine, I've had mine 20 years. <laughs> Oddly, aesthetically, also, that the mansard roof on the portico, to me, aesthetically, is more pleasing than a pitched roof would be. Well, this would have, this is a mansard, but it does it basically comes up. This is going to end up being a flat roof. You're going to have a little bit of single ply membrane 
roof up here. Mm. That's all right. Just Nobody's so going to see it. Just so I hold it down so you get more contiguous. Right. Uh, right. But the, it just adds more variety to the, uh, to the facade, mm -hmm. which I think is wonderful. Well, this is what we're getting some of the proportions, but this is, this is coming along pretty well. Good. And you don't have a diagram of where it's placed in the fields and things like that, do you? Well, an hour ago. Uh, looking at a couple plans. Tony said he wanted uh, two or three. We all know we want this to face south. Yeah. So there really is one. I mean, on that particular site. Actually, I came up with two. And this is just very, very rough. And I'm going to start here, I guess. So this plan, here's the building. Here's the, here's the loop. Coming off the back of the loop for some car spaces in the back here with service and generator. I mean, not generator, but transformer and uh, dumpster. Uh, parking in the front, this is 50 cars. This is just 50 cars. No plants yet. Not, not really dressed up very nicely. But just to find out how 50 cars fits in front of this, uh, from the space, you can see it comes right down to the, uh, the, the container. Uh, and we're saving a little, I saved a little bit of room back here because I didn't want to run into the hill and get into some fill. Um, you can have a bigger grass area here or you could put another seven or eight cars here if you wanted to, if you need more, more parking. Uh, this is, again, this is the porch. This would be the view up. So it's really, I, was, I spent an hour there today, and it really looks good from a lot of different directions. Um, over here would be your uh, little bit of plaza coming off the uh, great room, and you can do games or exercise area, garden behind the kitchen right here. It all works very well. Are you using the existing circle at all? Or Here's, the existing this drive? Is, this is the existing drive, okay. and we're leaving it alone, and we're basically coming off of it nice. in, in three places. So that the, there's no plans of that being uh, paved or anything? Right here? Yeah. Well, yeah. If, I, 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 if you want us to put this in the bunch of houses, I would try to repave and, yeah, and, and, and all that, but I want to, you want to try to reuse oh, it's the existing off, it's curb cut yeah, area. So, and there's, there's, there's lots of parking here for the yeah, fields. Yeah, so when you say there's here. only 50 spots, if there is an event, yeah. there's probably another. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, 20, 20 yeah. plus up there, yeah. 30 maybe. But you can see, based upon this site, there's not a lot of places. That you really we don't want to turn the building, but if you want to, you could have the building this face directly west, and you could run it this way, uh, but that's not the, the preferred solution. So the other way I looked at it, and it takes some use of this mirroring, mirroring the building. Does it help us or hurt us? It basically puts the great room on this side, and the little bit in there, and the plaza on this side. It puts the porch on this side. Uh, now, morning sun is coming into the uh, multi-purpose classroom, the arts and crafts, and billiards. The western sun is coming into the uh, the great room. Uh, not where I prefer it. I think uh, seniors are using the building more in the mornings, and it's nice to get that in the, mor the morning light. It shortens this up a tiny bit because now the kitchen is over here, so the service is a little bit shorter. Your existing foundation is going to be too. That's what the whole basement was. Did you rethink the basement was? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good to know. <clears throat> so there, there's two options. Basically, it's the parking stays the same, but the building flips. Like the first one? Does the first one, where, is the, where would the truck deliveries be in relation to where people would be sitting outside? Truck deliveries. Back. The truck would be back here. Okay. okay. I mean, if it's something large, it needs to come through double doors. It can come through the double doors directly into the great room, which case the truck may just park over here okay. and drop it in through the plaza, or probably not through the front door. Okay. It seems to me that configuration is the most welcoming from the point. The, the, when sure. you have the multi-purpose room on the west side, that's like this big monolith. Right. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, in that particular case, I would change this. I'd add warmer. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then that could add to the cost too, because you'd have to do some uh, decorative work on that yeah. multi-purpose room facade. Yeah, you save some site costs and go back into that. Mm. So we're, I think equi they're both equivalent. Right. They end up being equivalent. John, uh, this came before the uh, Council on Aging at their last meeting and they had a unanimous vote to support 
that floor plan that you see below those uh, those elevations right there. Notwithstanding those two or three little uh, adjustments that you had made. Yeah. But that had their total support and wanted that knows. Good. Last thing? Yep. So the last I think it's well, I'll accept those little, uh, you know, the one and two foot the changes. adjustments. Okay. Okay. Now, they have not seen the elevations, but quite frankly, I think that is a less concern at this point. We're leaving it up to, the, to you and this committee. I, I think the elevations are not extravagant, but, you know, they're, they're in keeping with the rest of the building. They've been very cost effective, long maintenance, good life cycle. And, and the other thing we try to do is obviously keep the scale down. It's, it's you know a large building, and we want it to be impressively large. People want to come into it. You know, they want to feel like it's uh, maybe just for them. John Hathaway, mm -hmm. I, I would move that we accept the preliminary floor plan 1A as our base document going forward. Mm -hmm. One eight dated uh actions from the state of the second. Second. Any discussion on that? All in favor. Aye. 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 And then so John, what's the next step? Uh next we will uh, we'll take if this we're trying very quickly to get the boardings, because without the boardings, the geotech department we can't do the structural engineering. So we need to, like, Tony's already taken the drawing. I brought him tonight and already <laughs> marked the boardings out in the last two minutes. So uh, get to get the boardings located and get the boardings started, doing that as the next immediate step. Uh, I'll be meeting with my consultants to do a kickoff, to start looking at the MEP, the structural, um, and, and the, uh, the civil side to develop these plans. We've got basically about four or five weeks and to that end, I'll be staking out these locations tomorrow morning, painting dig safe uh, notification so that dig safe will be called tomorrow after it's staked out. They have three days then in which to come out and do their markings. So that puts us to like mid next week, so potentially Thursday, whether cooperating. We'll have a drill rig mobilized on site, and we'll be able to do borings and geotech and have that information to John uh, before the end of September. And part of the other thing that I didn't mention, but it's, it's critical, is for us to uh, put together a cost. We don't know where this is in the range of your budget right now, so that's probably the biggest question mark we need to resolve. And so we'll be working on a square foot cost for the building, but we also now I'll talk to my site designer, if, and he'll modify that design to be you know, nicer, uh, a little bit more interesting, and then we'll uh, try the cost of that, and then we'll, we'll know where we are as far as budget goes. Didn't you say, John, you already had the estimator working on this? I had, the, I had called the estimator and asked him to work on a dollar per square foot cost for the building. We don't have a site plan yet. This was literally being still wet. Uh, so, and, and the site designer hasn't seen it yet, so uh, I've got to go through places, or civil engineer, he's got to modify it. We also have to show on there, you know, where the retention basin is going to be, and, and some other elements. We know that there's an overhead line coming in the back, which we might want to keep. It works very well, because our, our, our uh, transformers on that side of the building. We're going to take sewer out to the horseshoe, uh, and then exactly where how big of a uh, stormwater system are going to get based on this. Do, do you remember when, this, how long ago when the school was there? How many years ago was there a school? They tore it down four years ago. Four years was ago? Was it four years ago? Because it would be really exactly. nice if I can call that pre-development in my stormwater design and take, take into account the, uh, the impervious that, that was there when the school was there. We make our stormwater system mm. smaller, mm. more cost efficient. Raj, do you think that's 
the realm of reason. <laughs> Not so much. I don't know. Uh, but there is a timeline. I mean, if we've done it before, where we came in after the building demolition and we were allowed to use the uh, the original construction area. So you're using their development as your pre-development number. Yeah. So the question is, uh, now you know where the, the structure stays. Do we need conservation? No, actually, we'll, we'll the, get uh, to them. Places is responsible for get, get, getting a wetland flagging. So the, the wetland uh, expert is going to walk the site, and he's either going to flag it or say that it's, it's not something that should be flagged. And then and that also, conversation goes to come. And also, you you did mention we won't be cutting too many trees. No, actually, we're uh, it's pretty wide open. Pretty wide open, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah, we walked it, and I didn't see any. Well, when we that. We're going to take the sewer out the asphalt walkway. So if there's, you know, and I don't know how deep we're going to be with the sewer, probably three or four feet. So I don't think even that will disturb too many trees. For your, your you, what you just said about using the, you know, what, when the mix of building was still there, I don't think we should do that. And the reason I don't think we should do that is I, years ago, was at that field, the, the ball fields. There were little, literally ducks swimming on the ground in the, foot puddle of water that settled at that field. So we, we want to try to fix that problem and not mitigate it. We're going to have no, percolation so tests and infiltration tests, so we're going to know exactly how the soil was. I sat there in one heavy rainstorm about a month and a half ago. I mean, you know how heavy it was. And yes, I saw the water beat up, and I saw probably about a half inch of water, but it flowed everywhere. Is there a way to level the field? Is there what? Level the field, the ball field. Level. You wouldn't want it level. Oh, oh, the field over there? The ball field? You actually want to build pitch. it up, right? Build it up, not level. Build it up. There's yeah. not going to be much fill, I don't believe. But they're using from the first side? Maybe from the police station fill. That's not fill. That's topsoil. That's more topsoil. Topsoil. Yeah, that would just be mush. Uh, I'm guessing this is going to be a pretty balanced site. It's yes. pretty level. You're going to want finish grade. If we're using not the existing broken up old pavement, but that elevation as our finish elevation, which is smart to do, you're going to be pretty level site. I don't see a lot of good usable soil coming out of here that you're going to be regrading anything. Yeah, we're still going to import structural fill because the material there probably doesn't qualify. So, but I don't know that there's going to be a lot of, I don't suspect that there'll be anything that we could drop over there. Uh, you want to do something you're talking you about building up the field? You don't have to reseed it for an inch. So we really want something substantial to go in there. That's one, of the, that's one of the questions you know, people are asking. Mm -hmm. Can they do something with the field? If we build a full basement. <laughs> you can uh, do anything. Is there anything else to John? Can you draw that yourself? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it's been a very satisfying. Value engineering, buddy. This has been a very satisfying meeting. Um, and we are on time and under budget with no, the police station. Uh, under, oh, oh, pretty cool. If there's any way <laughs> that we can keep the police station at least one dollar on the budget, I can't tell you how important that is going to be to our arguments for the town meeting uh, and the vote uh, for the senior center, that we can say we're working with the same team uh, that brought us in on the budget uh, and on time with the police station. Um, so if if you could do it, do it, please. No, no. Tony, don't spend too much money on that. You get three weeks left. Not spending a penny. We got a lot of donuts to buy for 40,000 bowls. That's a hell of a grand opening, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Let's, let's move on to our uh, finger sandwiches. <laughs> Terrifying. So we have a proposal in front of us for $8,700 for the geotech work. Do we hear a motion? So move. So move. Second. Any other discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, subcommittee uh, discussion. I know the subcommittee, there's some uh, some missed meetings and stuff like that. So Scheduling issue. Scheduling issue. It was. I mean, it's, it's, it, I said from the beginning that I can't be here at, at 10 o'clock in the morning or I said after 3.30, and I know there's some other people that said later it wouldn't be a problem. I guess the issue we're having now is um, 
the director has something to do at that time, which is fine. I mean, I have no problem with it going later in the day or switching it, you know, maybe one time at 3.30 and one time at 5.30. That would be my suggestion. So is that something the subcommittee can get together on and change that? And make, make, I mean, it's fine with me, you know, any time is fine. Is everybody on the subcommittee? You too, right? Yep. You too, you too. The only difficulty I have with the 5.30 is I'm basically not going to be able to go back to my office after the 11 o'clock meeting and then come back out here. So I'm going to be sitting here for about five or six, five or six hours, not being very productive that day. That's why I was hoping for earlier in the afternoon meetings. That's my perspective. Yeah, that, that. Well, we do have a, I mean, it is a different kind of thing. I mean, the, um, the people that we've hired are skilled professionals. Um, they have to be at the meeting because we're paying them and they work on a professional schedule. With regard to us, members of the committee, um, we're sort of interchangeable. Uh, it can always be covered by somebody on the committee. Uh, Jay, uh, John and I have always covered the building construction meetings at the police station. And uh, all, all three of us have, Jay, I don't think it's missed any. Uh, one. Uh, so, you know, I think we ought to work to the professional schedules, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, uh, and we have the added uh, uh, good um, uh, that Tony is extremely good as an administrator and taking minutes. Um, so all the meetings are covered with minutes, etc. So I would argue that we ought to work towards the professional yeah. schedule. I, I agree, but and at the same ourselves around it. I agree, but at the same time, you know, Chris is also on the subcommittee. If you have a meeting on every time, nine o'clock, so every time he has to read the minutes, that makes uh, you don't have to be on the subcommittee. Right? There is an option uh, after the first or second week of October. We're not going to be meeting with the police. Is, right. is there another day of the week, Chris? The, after no, I work. <laughs> I mean, and I can make okay. some, right. but that won't be dragging. Yeah, but you and I here for eleven, and then right. back at right. Right. I mean, I know. Right. I'm like you. Couple Tony, weeks Tony left. could probably leave yeah. and come back because right. you're more local. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. But but, but sure. I mean, but Tony just mentioned. Yeah, we could meet in the we yeah, three, three more meetings, meetings and, and as we're long as I'm not here at a morning meeting and then trying. To, if I don't have a morning meeting at the police, I can come any at late afternoon meeting. Oh, I don't mind if it's late afternoon on another day. Yeah. I mean, that's if that's what you're saying. I have no, yeah. I have no problem with that. Oh, late just, afternoon just on another day. It doesn't Monday. have to be. Does, it doesn't have to be Monday. Yeah. So after the so you can so you can leave at eleven, and then the next day come back at because you have a conflict with every other Monday. Yeah, Monday evening. Anyways. Monday afternoon is going to be good, but we do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That works. Fine. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, three, four, five. Uh, I'm good. Whatever works. So. Yeah, that works. I think. The committee members can get together and work that out. Does that work for everybody? Okay. All right, we have a meeting currently scheduled for Monday the 18th at 2 o'clock. So yes. I serve at the pleasure of the committee. Whatever you guys tell me to change that to, I will change it to. Well, yeah, again, I just asked that. It, I mean, it was, it was 3.30. Then when the email came out, I know it was moved to 2. Okay. What's so. the agenda now? That is site. Given okay. you in places a week to figure so out. So can move that to three thirty? Is that an issue? Move that yeah. to three thirty. I think it is with the director. I so it would have to be check. later. Yeah, I it would have to be later. Don't know. You're you're on the COA. Are they scheduled for the eighteenth? Is it every Monday or every other Monday? No, they're not. It's the second Monday of the month. We don't meet officially again until the Monday after Columbus Monday, Columbus Day Monday. Okay. So, however, they can meet on short notice, if need be. No, I was just trying not to, I know Lisa said she had an obligation, I think a family obligation. I don't know every day, every to, Monday. To that point, you know, I did have a discussion with her, and, and um, as long as she has adequate notice, she should be able to make an every other week meeting if it's, you know, later in the afternoon, outside normal working hours. It's just that she would need to have the ability to schedule other obligations uh, so that she can make that work to attend. And, you know, it's not necessary that she attend every meeting. 
you know, she is the liaison to the to right. the group, but that doesn't mean she needs to be there at every meeting. Uh, as far as it's an opportunity for us to get some uh, questions answered, she's sort of the gatekeeper to all of that. So if we're here, we're, we're trying to, you know, there's probably issues, I don't want to say they're issues, but they're probably questions of development issues that we probably like to see her most of the time. She's, she's generally the person that everybody uh, looks to for our responses. So it'd be very, very helpful. The other thing is that, you know, presuming that we're lucky enough to, to uh, get the funding, the subcommittee is going to have members that are going to continue, may continue on to construction. Construction, mm -hmm. contractors that's, are walking out at, different. at 3 o'clock. And all those are going to be morning or early afternoon meetings. So who's ever on the committee has to understand that you're going to continue during the construction phase. This is, this is so we can get this for, the, for this part of me now. So I believe the, the committee members can work it out to make the uh, appropriate times. Should I agree with both everybody? Yep. All right, anything else? I'm a senior center. Anybody? Okay, invoices. Uh, Cardinal for the police station was $10,529.30. John and Tony anymore? No, I'll stay. So moved. Stay. Bye. No. I'll stay. Thanks. There are invoices. You may have questions <laughs> on. So moved, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Cardinal for the senior center, $4,015. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. CBA for the police station, $4,667. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, um, Lantel, this is for the police station. Um, we CBA. do, sorry, we do have I RACs. Have I never saw an RAC though. I don't have any. I thought you, I thought you copied no, the no, cover. I just sent it to you. Oh, sorry. Um, we have, it was in, included in my package as well. Um, we have a pay application from RAC builders in the amount of $551,659. That's all. So here's the original for me for the two projects and RAC builders. So moved. Uh, so 50. And, and how many percent? Oh, so anybody second? Second. second. How much percent is that? I forget. That page. Yeah. That brings them to 94% complete. Okay, that, this is for the police station. For the police station. 94% complete. My top their dollar value. Is that including a 5% holdback? So they're 99% with a 5% holdback, or are they at 89 no. total? Okay. Correct. They're at 89 total. 94, then we take 5% off that. Does everybody understand that? Yeah, motion and second. All, oh, sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so. Uh, For CBA? Yeah. Senior Center? No. That's all it was, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, he was asking me about the previous. Because it's on the list. This is some. Um, Lantel, police station was $25,200. That was. Oh, yeah, right. Correct. That is for. Own system, Tell data installations, and that is exactly what their contract amount, proposed amount was, $25,200. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Lantel, uh, please say from $120,000, $116.80. $120,000. Correct. That is a partial of the hundred and hundred and eighty hundred and fifty thousand dollar commitment on that line item for land tell. So they're they they're still doing work. So the other the farm the piece, tell data piece is complete, the security is still being installed. So this is a partial So those are two different jobs. 
There are two different scopes under Lantel. They own Tel Data, they own cameras, securities, door systems, which are still being installed. They now own the Wi Fi for around the building, the wireless points. So some of that work is still ongoing. And what will that mean for balance? Is that, I mean, a uh -huh, percentage? Uh, 120 of 150. Okay. 80%. Uh, okay. So moved. So second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. The last one is for uh, Place Associates for the survey for the Senior Center for $9,813.19. So moved. Second. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Is it? Anybody else have anything? Motion to adjourn. Second. Next no. meeting is. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. That's a good point. That's me. I would. Um, Do we need one? Uh, we're gonna need you guys, you guys, meeting in two weeks. You said the uh, subcommittee. We're, we're scheduled right now for the 18th. I will leave that up to John if he thinks places is going to have enough site information worked out to actually present something or I mean it's this the only person who could present by the 18th would be me. So I probably shouldn't be doing that so <laughs> we need to have places on board so what, <laughs> what about the twenty seventh? Does that give you time? Uh, yes I would think so. We're hoping for at least two weeks. Okay. So and we already we have a selectman's meeting on the twenty seventh. And if we're gonna do six o'clock twenty seventh. What for? Well, I just, it's we just a special need meeting that's annually held to approve the warrant before it gets. Okay. Is, that, is that a long meeting? It should be 15 to 20 minutes. So we could do that at 6 30. Well, we do the meeting, the select meeting at 6 30, then we'll do the uh, fifth meeting at 7. All right. Well, I think so, the 27th will help us too, then we can decide on right. how we're going to run the 14th. Right. All right. So, so we'll have a better idea if that's. 7 o'clock, the 27th. But do you have a board of selectmen meeting? At 6 30. So what time do you want to meet at the police station for a walkthrough if you want to do that before the meeting? That's not going to work. Then that's not going to work. 5.30? No. We can, yeah, we can actually, we could meet there at 5.30. I could make it. Want to do that? 5.30 at the police station on the so 27. 5.30 PD. And then when I come back here, it's 7. 6.30. You get it. No, the fist meeting is going to be yeah, coming back here at 7. 7. Fist. Which means we're going to be, I'll take the 18th off, I'll talk to Lisa and see if everybody's available for Tuesday the 26th so that you can do site layout, building site layout with the subcommittee. Why Tuesday not Monday? I don't know, because other people have a conflict with Monday. And you don't want to be here for 15 hours. Right. Okay, I see what you're saying. We should commit. <laughs> <laughs> we got a cell you can stay in. <laughs> Whereas maybe you can check your schedule and come for you know five o'clock on Tuesday, mm -hmm. and then not have to come back on the 27th. Would it make sense to to it's have just the for selectman meeting after the right. fist meeting? Because now we're, what we're looking at is. Everybody in the FISP is going down to the police station. Then there's a half hour that they're going to. Yeah. Yeah, well, Didn't come as coming to the selectmen's meeting. Oh, okay. no, but, not, not, excuse me, not on the 27th. That's the 28th. Don't, don't you think we need some down. audience for the select board meeting? <laughs> yeah, good point. Although, how, how do we time the ending of the FISP meeting then? What do you mean? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to set the next meeting. Right. Yeah, you know, we can say the selectmen's meeting is going to take half hour. We, if we say, all right, we're going to leave an hour or an hour and a half for the FISP. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. So, so you yeah, just leave it alone. We'll do a yeah, selection at 6.30, like it was. Yeah, but, but in reality, I mean, it's not like right. if, we, if we finish in half an hour, you can go home. Well, you don't have to come right down. Huh? We'll just pick a different date to go through. No, we'll do 5.30. We'll do 5.30. All right. So now we need a motion to do. So move. So move. It's very good. You don't have to remind me today. Yeah, it's, you still on, it's still on my radar screen to, to, present to get that data in order. I did get a call from ABM, and you said that he apologized that it was confusing that way.